Good morning everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, in our uh, journal creation for Edie, is we're going to prepare a slow stitch for Edie to complete. So the aim is to piece together a design, um, tack it down with invisible stitch, and then I'm thinking, I don't, I'm not sure if it'll work or not, but I'm thinking about then going around and outlining some um, areas for Edie to actually stitch in to sort of get her to sort of take over from where we leave off, if that makes sense. So I'm thinking that pen might work. The, um, the plan is to use some of this embroidery. I love the colours and I think it'll really help um, sort of build something quickly for her. So what I want to do is I'm just going to, I think, cut cut this through here and I'm just going to fussy cut out very carefully this piece. I don't think I want that one. I think I just want this little one. And I've got out of my uh, patterns the Alfred pattern. This is my go-to bird pattern. If you don't have it, I'd highly recommend you grab it and add it to your collection because not only is it a heap of birds, but it's um, a heap of birds that can be made into hundreds of birds. What I mean by that is Lisa Mattock, who is the designer in um, from Australia, has put together some templates in the back of this book that are all the bits you need to make the birds in this quilt. But of course, I haven't made the quilt. I've only just sort of been playing with the birds and I've used them in so many projects. That's why I think it's just a, a great pattern to have in your um, repertoire or in your, your sh on your bookshelf because in the very back of it, is um, all the bits. So what I'm always doing is grabbing some of those elements and piecing together to make a bird suitable for whatever I'm doing. Now on each page throughout the actual book, she has, um, well, the quilt is like lots of squares. So when you get into it, I'll bring that up to the camera so you can see what I mean. See how each panel is a little bird? And then she's done some stitching with the little bird. It's such a sweet, sweet project. It'd make a gorgeous quilt. So when you get in like the first block, first little bird pieced together on fabric and then a little bit of stitching that she recommends to go with it. So really simple, a great beginner project. Second block and so forth. So in the back, this is where I'm always hanging around, is this page full of bits, bodies, wings, tails, and all sorts, which allows you then to piece together all sorts of little birds. So I've got that put aside because I'm thinking, where's my piece? I'm thinking about creating a scene, like a garden, with an Alfred in it and I grab some brightly colored um, pieces of fabric. Now, do I need something in the background behind this? Or, um, I'm just wondering. I might piece Alfred together next. Um, I'm not sure. Let me think. I'm gonna cut this out while I think. Just so that Edie doesn't have to embroider, I'm going to use these little elements to build up the embroidery. And all Edie has to do is do some slow stitch around the place. It's going to be so good to use this big well, it was a, a huge tablecloth that Edie's grandmother found when op shopping. And she thought of me and thought, oh, and I think she said it was like $3 or something. It must have been sort of rattling around in the 
op shop for a while and <clears throat> they've reduced it to $3. And just the linen alone through the center of the tablecloth, I salvaged all that and just beautiful, beautiful quality linen. Looks like it's been well used and well uh, washed. I can see that the red cotton has um, lost its lost its color. Sort of feel like I need a background fabric. Maybe I don't. I'll cut them all out because I sort of feel like I might use them. If I don't, doesn't matter. They can go into an envelope with the journal. There's other elements that Edie could use. So I'm not too concerned about having these little extra pieces. Okay. I will put a little bit of glue, art glitter glue around that seam. Uh, not the seam, the, the raw edge, just to hold, hold it. Now, I also grabbed some yo-yos. I've got some yo-yos here too that I thought might be a bit of fun to put on the panel. Now, let's have a look at the birds. We want a little bird. A reasonable size so that he holds his own in amongst it all. Oh, I like that little guy. Give him really long legs. So that would be that fellow. There's his tail is his wing and then a semicircle. So it's that little guy. Okay. Let's let's just Get our little bird out of our book. I want the flowers to be over exaggerated. And the bird to be a little bit smaller. Okay, I'll leave it at that for now. And let's cut. Let's cut this out. I'd love to make that quilt one day. Yes, Fudgy, good morning. How are you? Fudgy, he's about to walk right into amongst this. Come, Pussy, you're right. Now you've seen me cutting out this and thinking, well, that looks dangerous. I better not get too close to them scissors. He's probably right. You're very smart, Fudge, aren't you? Maybe I get some patchy pieces of fabric in the background. And then his little legs. Maybe we can lift him up a little bit. Bring him more into the... Oh, 
that into there. You can have him trotting through the garden bed. Just jiggle this around until we find that we've got our pieces in place. Maybe he can come up. Maybe I could do a bigger bird. <clears throat> mm, he's, he's all right. Let's see what colors we can do in. Let's give him a red tail. Nice and bright. So he's a very bright little bird. But at the end of the day, you can do all sorts of shapes with birds and feathers and, oh, I like doing birds, especially these simple ones. If you're new to slow stitch, they're a really good place to start. I feel like we need a second tail. I'm going to cut, cut this second one. I just feel like it could, could give him a little bit of plumage. It's going to be so hard not to just stitch this and finish it. Maybe I need to make two, one for me and one for Edie. I haven't done anything bright like this for a little while, so. Yeah, we'll give him two tails, why not? Now what are we gonna make? Oh, Fudgy, can you hear him? He hasn't got his way, so he's now in the garage just bellowing. So I'm looking for fabric for the body of the little bird. Oh, look at that fabric cut ready to make yo-yos. If there's anything there. I sort of like that blue, don't, don't I? Oh, it makes me want to do a piece that's all bright and happy and yeah I'm gonna do that it's even got a little bird on his tummy I wonder if I could line up line up those little birds probably the the tail oh the wing will cover it anyway so it's probably a bit a bit of a waste of time but anyway A little blue bird. What's the matter, Fudge? You're back again. There we go. Oh, hello, Fudge. He just wants up on my lap. Okay, I don't know if I can film and nurse a cat at the same time and do a slow stitch. Talk about degree of difficulty. He's purring away here. I'll just tilt the camera and you can just see him. He's sitting on my lap. Say hello, Fudge. There he is. Hey, Fudgy. All right, back to what we're meant to be doing here. Sorry, guys, if I've made you a bit seasick. Now, we need a little wing. What colour do you reckon, Fudge? Need something that's going to stand out. What about... What about a green wing? Would that seem a bit weird? A little green wing?
graining. Does that stand out enough? I'm not sure about that. You know, my first instinct was to grow <clears throat> was to go for this um, blue. But I sort of felt like that might have been a bit of an obvious choice. Let's cut it out anyway. Oh, pussy. You know when cats need you with their claws? He's sitting here, he's purring away, he's happy, happy. And he's attempting to knead me. Yeah, I think I like that wing. Okay, let's just pop these aside, Fudgy. Still not sure what I'm going to do for a background. Put a pin in those. So I want to have something. Do I just get some neutrals of all different colours? What have I got in my neutral pot here? Maybe we do a bit of lace. As the background. Um, I did pick up a little doily. This came from a stash of doilies that her grandmother also found when she was op shopping on my behalf. I just get those bits out of the way. So I thought maybe that could be worked into it. How cute. It's not even cut out. It's the whole doily. Mm, don't know about that. Um, sort of need some little bits of textile that's. Um, 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 I'm really drawing a blank. Um, do we create a background of textile? Do we, do we just lay more calico in? Um, I don't know why I'm stumped. What do you reckon, Fudge? Because I could draw lots of lines in behind the little bird that she can, like running stitch, like a checker. And she can do, yeah, I might do that. Because if I add colourful pieces in the background, I'm going to take away from the embroidery. Um, maybe. How would I work some yo-yos in? See, they're such beautiful, bright colours. Maybe I could make a sun out of that one. Yeah, let's let's get this yo-yo out. I think it's gonna disconnect the vintage yo-yo. Just to snip them all apart. Maybe I can find, I still feel like I need a background. grandmother's going to see this yo-yo and have flashbacks there we go so we've got a sun 
We might do some little lines out from the sun. Put that up in the top corner. Do we do something crazy and do that? Mm, don't know. Um, So I do, I feel like we need something, some texture of some description. But I don't know what. Why am I stumped? Nothing jumping out at me there in the way of colours. It's very neutral. What do you reckon, Fudge? Do we... Here's a bit of doily. No. Oh boy. I'm struggling to come up with something. Do we put some little pieces of fabric around? Just some little patches. Might be a bit of fun. Let's just have a play. Keep playing. Something will come along. So I'd really like her to stitch around some squares and rectangles. Yeah, I like that. There's a little bit of green here. Maybe we can get See, I think um, I think half my problem here is my fabric is not very big and I sometimes think it is harder to work with fabric that is smaller you know the size of our fabric is smaller than it is bigger pieces because you've you've only got so much space that you can work in I might try and get another piece in somewhere. Just looking through all these little colours here. I've got a check, a blue check. It's got potential just to... Put a little patch. Maybe on there. Very colourful. I think I might leave it at that. Just a pop of something. I might do. I need something over there, but I don't have a lot of space. I need something primary coloured. There was some red in amongst. That's his red tail. I sort of don't want to do anything that's from the little bird himself. No. Oh, goodness me. How can this be so hard? Do we pop another bit of pink over there? I do have this little blue spot, but it's sort of not the colours. I want to keep it very primary. I don't think... Look, I might leave it at that. I think I'll leave it at that and we'll see how it sort of develops from there. Yeah, I 
think that's got potential. We can put some lines in around the place and maybe we pull that over so that it's sort of more there. Um, oh gosh, I don't know. I'm thinking actually of changing the bird's wing color so that I can add this blue spot. into the piece. Like over there. Just about jiggling everything so that it Gets a little space. Try and make it all fit. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So, we need another wing colour. What can we do for a wing? We need it to stand out. Maybe we bring a bit of... Bit of bit of what? Bear with me, guys. Um, maybe this soft blue will work. Yeah, let's try that. What do I do with these wings? Mm, I do like his wing. How can one little bird be so tricky? Oh, I know what we'll do for a wing. Let's put some lace on him. We don't need a fabric wing. Oh, Fudgy, you're on my lap and I can't quite reach these scallops. Here, look. I know what we'll do. We're going to give our little bird a lacy wing. That's what we're going to do. Let's cut this down a little bit. And see what sort of size we need. There we go. Little lacy wing. There we go. That's what we're going to do. Okay. Gosh, all of that effort. Let's tidy up our little pieces of fabric here before it gets out of control. Okay. And we might put some additional little flowers on his wing. We'll come up with something there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so now the next thing is to have all of this actually um, get a little bit of glue. Even that would work. Off on another tangent. No. Nope, 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 nope. Should I do his lace wing bigger? No. Hmm. I'm not sure what I'm thinking. Still not 100% with that wing. I might have to look for maybe a smaller little scallop, but I think that will be all right because I've got some little flowers we could probably stitch in across there, I'm thinking. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna go around with the art glitter glue and just drizzle a tiny little bit on the edges of all of these pieces of fabric. 
is I want them to not fray. So it's just a case of And then I will invisible stitch everything down, then come back and put some, oh, that's folded over. Do we want it a little extra? Yeah, why not? This cat's gone to sleep on my lap and it's really uncomfortable for me because I'm stooped over bent in the back trying to get back to the area of which I film but hey Fudgy's Fudgy's comfortable I have to move him along Do I need all of those flowers? I'm going to have to move Fudgy. Come on, puss. Wake up. Come on, little pussy. Oh, he is solid asleep. Anyone else out there dictated by a cat? Your behavior has to be modified for the cat. It's crazy. I'm going to get rid of a flower. I'm going to leave it at just these few. I'm thinking. That way, if I want to put some more patches of colour in, I can because I think that was my problem. The flowers were taking up too much of my real estate. I might connect that up there. There's a last minute decision. It's not that one I want. It's this one, I think. Yeah. Nothing better than having a few random elements and trying to pull together a piece that looks cohesive can be a real challenge. Get that one right up in with the bird. I think I could probably have a little patch down there. Maybe I've got to bring in a little bit of red. I know it's in the tail, but I sort of feel like we just need another little piece of something. Okay, I'm liking that. Let's get this blue. Oh, 
Oh, I've got an idea. Why do we have to have the plants all on the ground? We could have a plant poking through the top because we're in, in the garden, couldn't we? Let's play with that idea. It may not happen, but... Okay, so let's get some glue around this guy. Actually been on the lookout for a puppy dog for Edie's grandmother. Her um, husky of 11 years passed away in November last year, I think it was. And she said she'd dearly love another dog, but not, not at the moment. There you go, Fudgy. Off you go. We've got doggy talk happening here. She'd dearly love an, another dog, but it would have to be a mature dog because she didn't want to go through the whole puppy puppy thing. And she felt like that one day she'd be ready to take on a mature dog. And prior to the Husky, she had a Border Collie. And um, she loved the Border Collie. I think she had two prior over the years. And anyway, Grandma's announced that she's ready to open her heart again. So it's taken a nearly a year to the idea of a, um, a new dog. But it must be a mature dog. It can't be a pup. That was the stipulation. So we've just been keeping our eyes open to see if there's... Um, a puppy dog that comes up. I have a friend, she actually purchased the litter mate to Bandit. So we sort of have been in touch and enjoying watching each other's dog develop, Bandit and Bruce. <laughs> and anyway, I, I sent her a message and of course she's a vet at the RSPCA. <clears throat> That's like our refuge animal refuge establishment that's in Australia. And um, I said to her, if you hear of a border collie coming in, let me know, but it must be a mature border collie. Anyway, a couple months has gone by and I got a message yesterday afternoon that a border collie has come in and his name is Bailey. And he is six months old. Uh, not six months, six years old. So he's had his vet check and nothing's come up there. The owner has um, surrendered him. Not sure of the reason, but there was a message to say that he's scared of storms. And there was something else that was a behaviour thing, but it wasn't real real serious i'd say the dog has got just a little bit lonely that type of behavior thing anyway so for a retired grandma bailey would be pretty spot on i would say and this grandma lives near the beach so bailey would get daily walks along the beach a very quiet beach so what a life and she's the sweetest lady. So we're just waiting for Bailey to have his full assessment. So he's had his health assessment and he's come up really well. He does need some dental work. He needs his teeth cleaned, which the vets will do before he's released for up, put up for adoption. So the little bird's on. 
the wing is still a work in progress. I think maybe I just need to shape it. Get a bit more of a... Yeah, that's better. Um, yeah, so all exciting times potentially. So we're just waiting for the message to say that Bailey is officially listed. How are we going to do his legs? How did Lisa do his legs? Where is this little guy? He's got... Long legs. <laughs> I could probably put a little bead for his eye. So yeah, we're, we're waiting for the listing to become active. And do I put that up there? What do I do with the yo-yo? Oh my goodness. Maybe I do both. So I like the yo-yo to add a little texture to the page. I think I'll do both. How pretty. Yeah, so we're waiting for Bailey's advertisement to pop up and then we can have um, her do a application. Well, her daughter will do it for her. An application will be completed. And fingers crossed, their family gets to adopt Bailey. The vet who works there, she said, look, we should have a pretty good chance because mature dogs don't go as quick as young ones, as you can imagine. I'm just going to pop that there. So yeah, we are waiting with bated breath. So she's got to have a behaviour assessment, I think the words were, just to make sure there's no underlying issues. Is there anything else there we could snip out and add? Not really. My piece of fabric was bigger. I could really, really go to town. But anyway, stay focused, Corinne. Let's put all of these colourful elements to one side. We've done what we need to do. Okay, now I need a thread and a needle. And I'll just do some stitching to get this started. I might just get the yo-yo whip stitched down. A few little stitches around that outer edge. I guess even if, if she decides that it's not her thing, this stitching business, we've got... Oh, my finger is so sore. I've been doing so much needlework. If this is at least secure. Um, whoops, now I've gone. If it's all secure, she can um, just admire it. Just a pretty picture, I guess. We'll see, won't we? See if she shows a keen interest. I'll have to put little notes on everything just to say, on this project you do this, and this project you do that. The 
just going to scoot through the center of that yo-yo with some little invisible stitches. this side. I must show you a picture of Bailey. We shouldn't get too attached, should we? I shouldn't show you this, but I will. I just have a good feeling about Bailey. There, look. Look at that face. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful doggy. No, oh, here's another shot. Beautiful. <sighs> Nothing like a doggy. Oh, she's going to be beside herself. Her daughter was excited. Her daughter wasn't real keen on the idea for a little while. She was like, Mum, why do you need? Because um, her mum, this is Edie's grandmother, often babysits Edie's dog. And Edie has an Australian shepherd like Ben and Pepper. So, Grandma often babysits. But now that um, Opal, Edie's dog, has settled in nicely because she was 18 months old when they got her, she'd been surrendered by a gentleman who had had a stroke. And an emergency call went out through the Australian Shepherd community here in Australia. Does anyone know who could take an 18 month old female Australian Shepherd. And I saw that and I was like, oh, I wonder if Tanya and the kids would be interested and uh, sent them the photo and the link. And I didn't hear anything for about two weeks. And then suddenly a photo popped up and here was um, Opal sitting on the back seat of the car as they were all traveling back home, having collected her from a little rural town. So it was very, very sweet. So Opal has landed on her four paws. She's gone from living with an elderly gentleman in a caravan on a farm to living at the beach with three kids having a whoopee of a time. She's a beautiful dog. She's black, white and tan. Different colour combination to my pair. So if Bailey comes to join them, oh, happy doggies. Could you imagine the chaos? I think Bailey's other story was the dog, the owner was just too busy to give Bailey the attention that he needed. So I'm thinking that It should all work out. Okay, so that yo-yo is secure on there now. So I'm going to go through and just do a few more securing, securing stitches. And then that's pretty much ready to slide into the little journal with some little, you know, additional stitching. So I'll, I'll do like she can stitch around these patches. I'll draw some lines on them to give her a bit of a guide so she can do some patchworking on those. Maybe some lots of lines on this one. Mm. 
Okay. And then maybe... See, we've got checker here. Maybe we can do some crosses. Might as well take advantage of these these checks, eh? And do some crosses in here. This little one here. And just do a little patch. And the same for this one. And I might just put in a cream cream cotton so it's nice and visible for her and little bird will be the same we might just do a running line around but I will go ahead and overcast everything in that cotton so she'll be doing the decorative Decorative stitching. At the end of the day, if she if she doesn't like like this type of work, she can. Um, Give it to grandma and grandma can do it for her so we'll put a little bead on his eye that can definitely be stitched down onto there i think that'll be might bring it right up to his back or do we put it at an angle oh that's that's good let's do that let's angle it Yeah, that's better. Okay, I might even I might do a decorative line around that yo-yo. That'll be cute. Make it look like it's held on by a line of stitching. Be fun to do some turkey work in there have all the, the stitches coming out of it maybe i could do that that'd be pretty cute to make a little pom-pom there i think that's pretty much it we could get crazy and do some more you know plants in behind but i think i think that's a good start we could do some running stitch in behind it all but we'll we'll leave it at that and i guess if i am with edie and i can see her progress and she's thoroughly enjoyed it well then i can maybe come up with a few other bits and pieces we could do there's a little piece of lace i might even go through my snippets and see if i can find some other little bits and pieces we can add but that's you know that's pretty good Anyway, I've got to stop. Okay, so there's our little birdie embroidery. I've got a little bit of work to do on that to make it child friendly. And then um, we can add that to our journal as a little project. Okay, everyone, thanks for joining me. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.